Yeah, baby. Ooh. Hey, Jim. <laughs> oh, there we go. I finally got my Mercedes-Benz parts back. I'm going to unbox them, see what we got, and try to install and put back together the transmission of this 2005 Mercedes. This is the magic box that has our conductor plate in it. I sent it away to England. I sent it to a place that I found online just looking for problems uh, with this car. Uh, they're called ECU Testing. This is what their website looks like. This is just a, a shot from my tablet. Uh, it's ecutesting.com. And here we have uh, common faults by manufacturers. So we'll take a look at that. We'll go to Mercedes. And you check with the Mercedes faults. The very first thing that comes up is exactly what I have. Mercedes 7G Tronic transmission problem. So let's read more. Come on. It shows common, uh, common fault codes. My car had all of those. My car had all of these uh, common issues. So it sounded like it was perfect. Yes, they're going to test and rebuild, program it. Uh, it says it should be just plug and play. It says it comes with a whole lifetime warranty. Lifetime unlimited mileage. Sounds pretty good. And the quoted price, I think it was $330, and I think that was supposed to include shipping. I don't know. So I proceeded with, uh, if you watched one of the earlier videos, I removed the conductor plate and valve body from this transmission. In the process of doing so, I broke off the little round plug. Uh, it was stuck in the transmission, and... I didn't really know exactly how to go about trying to pry it out and apparently the way I did it was not the way you should do it because I broke it. But I called the company, ECU Testing, asked them what I should do in that instance and they said just include the broken part and they'll see what they can do uh, when they receive it. I put it in a separate larger Ziploc bag, I can show you, a heavy duty one and wrote on it my name in Sharpie and inserted that last in the box, taped it all up and sent it off uh, via DHL. And they contacted me and said, where's your plug part? <laughs> and a couple days later, I noticed the email and responded with, well, it was in the box. And it took them, gosh, probably uh, a week to review some video they say they had of the uh, uh, technician opening the box some surveillance video or something and they said that it was not in the box and then they asked if i had used dhl tape or or they said it had dhl tape on it and dhl was the carrier i didn't use dhl tape so they are then thinking that uh, customs opened it or dhl opened it for a customs inspection my plug component fell out and got lost. So now I'm going to open this box because they claim uh, that they were, uh, were going to take a plug component off of a donor piece that they had there and that they're going to f fix it free of charge. So uh, I ended up, they ended up charging me, uh, and again, they said after testing it, they said that they couldn't find any faults. I asked them to continue with the normal rebuild for everything that's uh, that they list on their uh, website for the this particular fault because that's everything my car displays. They said Meh, maybe it's intermittent and it just didn't show up while they were testing it, so they went ahead and did the rebuild. Uh, I was expecting to pay three thirty. They said uh, there was a fifty dollar uh, shipping fee that. Somehow, either I missed, I should look at the site again, uh, but I thought, oh, oh crap, uh, so it's going to be 380 hmm. Pretty sure it said 330 all in, but I didn't say anything to him. I just want my part back at this point. Okay, so when I went to actually pay on their automated system, 
it charged me two seventy plus fifty dollars. So I actually paid three twenty for the whole deal all in, and I was expecting to pay three thirty. So there's that kind of weirdness. But let's get on with opening the box and see what they sent me. All right, let's see what they sent us. Well, looks pretty nicely packed. Soft and squishy. Uh -huh. Well, there she is. Oh boy. And it has a plug. So they actually did fix the plug. Hooray. Let's have a closer look at that repair. Okay, on the receipt here, you can see where it says, no fault found. Possible intermittent fault rebuilt is requested. So, I'm going to cut open this plastic bag here. And it's nicely vacuum sealed. Looks like it's got some sort of paperwork in it. Okay, it looks like, yeah, they did a little plastic weld thing there. That's nice. That's pretty nicely repaired, actually. Yeah. And then they uh, re-soldered all the connections and topped it with uh, some goo. You can see where they changed stuff and did the same thing here where they pulled out components. All right. Well... I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. I uh, suddenly feel like this was a good choice because they fixed this plug way better than I would have been able to do here. Um, so that's a, a big win. All right, let's put it back together. Let's see what this says. Uh, okay, this is a nice little diagram they sent along that shows where each of those di uh, items, like when it says y3 8 uh, and 4 that's actually that component right there so it shows you where the exact location is of all those different components that are named in the fault codes so that's pretty nice huh. all right well that was nice of them to send along okay i'm feeling good about this let's put this transmission back together Okay, this has been laying here for over a month, waiting for the return. Okay, we have our beautiful valve body. And I cleaned it somewhat when I first took this whole thing apart. And I have a bunch of bags here. Each one has an individual component. And you can see where I wrote a number on the bag. And, of course, this is the same kind of bag that I put the broken plug in and the same Sharpie I used to write my name and all of that on it. So, uh, anyway, I have those numbered and I have my high-tech diagram here that I drew and you can see my art flare. And that will show me that number one goes there, number two, number three, number four, etc. But of course I have to put my conductor plate back on first. So I'm going to do that right now. I got this car several years ago. And when I bought it, I think it had about 190,000 miles on it or something like that. And 
it now has 204,000 miles and uh, something about this slide I should make sure I'm putting on right um, I'm gonna have to go watch a video but uh, this car it's such a nice car I really hope this fixes it so I don't have to part it out um, yeah, I'm not sure how this is supposed to go, so rather than screw it up, I'm going to go do some research and make sure I'm putting this little slide area here back together correctly. Well, I did not go and watch a video. I just fooled around with it a little, and it seems like there was a, a plastic pin somewhere right around here that has to line up with a, a, a hole in the valve body which would allow the whole thing to slip down into place and it did and then my little slide just slid right back inside this and I assume that these guys got to line up with something when it's actually going up into the transmission I'll have to look into that but now I just need to reinstall all of the fasteners uh, I have those let's see we have these that hold down all the solenoids, and I believe this is our bowl of uh, valve body fasteners, or not valve body, but uh, conductor plate. Jeez. Good morning, brain. Yeah, so I'm going to install all these. Okay, well, I have put in all of my uh, fasteners and tighten them up and then I have gone along and I have I, I cleaned every single one of the solenoids and some of them let me pull one back out here some of them when you would look at this little screen thingy here there was foreign debris on it and dirt and I'm not sure if it's a screen or really what it is but there was definitely foreign debris on a couple of them of an appreciable amount so uh, cleaning them probably is going to help the whole situation I cleaned them with uh, uh, brake clean but then I let them completely dry before putting this whole shebang back together so now I'm going to take these little hold down clip thingamajigs and uh, very technical terminology here and then these bolts to hold them down and I'm going to put all four of those in and put them to the correct torque which I don't know exactly what that would be I just do it by feel don't do it by feel you should find out what the actual torque is and do it the correct way don't do it the way I do it and then we're going to try to put this thing back up into the car and before I install it, I need to pay close attention to this little jewel and then this piece. It looks like it's plastic and it can go in different positions as we can see here. And of course over here is our plug. So let's have a look at the transmission. Okay, so if we go under here, we can see this is where the assembly has to fit and this hole right here is where the plug goes there's the plug that will attach from the outside so the plug will fit up into there so the opposite corner is where we have where I think the little slide thing I think has to go uh, line up with this pin and then I think that other roller piece then makes contact with these teeth so I just have to make sure that my little yellow slide is engaging this pin and I think then we'll be good. And I have to be careful not to break the little plastic slide thing installing this. I think that's the only thing here that I've got to really watch out for. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Well, good news. Uh, I think I've pro proven here that an inept guy that's never had a transmission open before in his life can actually get the guts of a transmission in an earlier Mercedes like this out and back in uneventfully. Well, 
uneventfully. It was a struggle. That thing's heavy and it's delicate. And let me show you. All right. You can see the valve body is back in place. I have all of the fasteners in. And on the side here, see if I can get a little closer. There we go. Uh, on the side here, you can kind of see up there, it's, it's right here, that yellow slide. And let's see if I can get up where you can see, yeah, there, that I have it lined up with that pin. So it's in good position there. And a little catch piece, whatever that spring thing is, is lined up in the teeth. I think that's the shift thing but it's all in all the fasteners are torqued down so i think it's time to just get back into what we've already done before which is uh, putting the pan on with a new gasket and all new fasteners the aluminum uh, s10 bolts or e10s or whatever they are and the little heat shield so i'll put all that back on and i'll show you when i'm actually filling it with fluid again time to fill i'm going to use this it's just a regular uh, oil transfer pump like you would use to fill uh, the rear end of an old Chevy or something where this end pops into the oil and then this end it just and I've used this once before to fill this transmission and it worked good. I have seven liters of this German automatic transmission fluid that I got from uh, I think it's called FCP Euro. Now I'm going to set up my drain pan just as a, like a workbench type thing. And I'm gonna put a catch basin underneath the bottles that I'm pumping from. That way if I do lose an appreciable amount, I'll be able to recover it. I will stick the hose here into the fill or, or the drain plug here, and I'll stick it in until my little rubber, uh, I put three little rubber O-rings on there. So I'll stick this in until it gets to my three rubber O-rings like that. And then I can push up against it just a little bit while my other hand is pumping and I'll be able to pump the fluid in here without losing very much at all. And I've had this work, I know it looks dumb, it's not at all what they show you uh, as far as using their special tool. It has to be a certain temperature. No, I'm just going to put in the amount that I know it should get. Probably, I'll probably start with four or five liters as long as it doesn't start uh, pouring back out. And then I'll start the car and let it idle until it warms up, until it gets to a point where this is warm to the touch. I think it's supposed to be like 105 degrees or something like that. But, you know, for this old car... I'm going to get it as close as I can, warm it up, and then fill again until it starts uh, dumping back out here, and then we'll call it good. I'm going to go ahead and fill it. It's all back together. Uh, of course, the bottom pans aren't on or any of that. Uh, all I have done is I've uh, refilled the transmission with transmission fluid. I started it up shifted it through the gears, let it warm up until the temperature of the fluid was about right, and made sure that I'd filled it to where it was dribbling out again, and put in the new crush washer and sealed it up. So now what I'm going to do is let it down. I'm going to hook up my little scan tool. I'm going to clear all of the uh, fault codes that I can clear, and we're going to clear out the driveway and take it for a test drive. Cross your fingers. I used my Harbor Freight ZR11 and I could have also used this uh, iCarSoft Mercedes Benz 2 and it'll do basically the exact same thing that this will do. This seems like it has a little bit more advanced of a uh, an interface because it's much quicker so i erased eight fault codes that were coming from the transmission i erased the secondary restraint codes i completely erased the obd system 
So in theory, we should be starting from scratch here. And here we go. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, it didn't shift very good there. inspiring a lot of confidence it's not terrible <laughs> I don't know that it feels much different th than it did before but let's go a little further oh yeah big hesitation I don't think it's any different no nope, real harsh downshift damn it Son of a bitch. So all that, and it still shifts like crap. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, big hesitation. I roll on the gas. It doesn't do anything. Hard downshift. Yep. All right, I'm gonna get it out and go fast. Okay. I can go a little here, see what happens. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I think it's better. It's still got a problem, but it's definitely better. <laughs> I do like this car. It's downshifting pretty good. It's got a lot to get up and go. Okay, it seems to be working okay. It's got a hesitation. It's not It's not quite right. But now that I get it out rolling a little, it's definitely better. I don't know if it's a daily driver better, but it's better. Let's take it back to the house and Put it on the scanner and see if it's thrown any new uh, transmission codes. All right. And I'll link up. I've got the ignition all the way on without starting the engine. And we're going to let it link. Uh... Pressure control solenoid 2810 G electrical. That's global. So let's go to the OEM enhanced and find out what our transmission reading is. Come on. Uh, what am I, yes, that's my vehicle. Yeah, it takes a minute. Jeopardy music. Almost there. And, okay, it says one of three. Oh, boy. Internal electrical check for component th Y38Y1. Okay, so that's one of our solenoids from inside our transmission. Uh, Y38S1. Selection range sensor. I'll have to figure out what that is. Uh, can controller. Can bus off. All right. I don't know what any of those are, but I think I know what one of them is. That solenoid. Uh, okay. Well, I'm chasing it down little by little. And there it is. Three is better than eight. We've made an improvement. It seems like the drivability has improved a little bit, so that's a plus. <sighs> Haven't cured the problem. I need to look into what those other things are. Uh, I know the one is for sure one of the eight uh, solenoids. Well, I know what solenoid that's identifying there. The other component, I'll have to look and see what that is. 
and then the CAN bus. I don't know. I have to look into this and see what all that means. So I'm not parting it out quite yet, but it's still not fixed. Thanks for watching.